Hello, so welcome to episode 9. So this week I'll be talking about DLP based 3D printing method. DLP stands for digital light projection. So this is a bit similar to last week's topic on the SLA stereolithography apparatus, except that this is uses a projector instead of a laser. So let's begin the episode. So for the aims and learning outcomes, it's a bit very similar to the format that we used in the last few episodes. Firstly, the aims to introduce the DLP process and the applications and to weigh the strengths and disadvantages of DLP. The learning outcomes are hopefully that you'll be able to explain how DLP 3D printers work, theoretically at least and able to explain three strengths and weaknesses of DLP 3D printers. And lastly, to be able to state three applications of 3D based printers. So this is what I hope you'll be able to learn. So to the next slide. So to introduce DLP technology, I want to remind you again that it, it was Envision Tech Perfectory that developed the DLP based 3D printers. And also one thing that I want to introduce is that Autodesk has launched the Spark 3D DLP printer on the September this year. So Autodesk, which is an influential company in the 3D printing space, wants to use this 3D printer as a reference point so that hardware manufacturers and software manufacturers and material scientists can collaborate with each other and to use this common platform to accelerate the adoption of 3D printing to the public space. So yes, so hopefully with the developments from Autodesk with their new open source platform, they can bring DLP technology to the masses the same way as FDM technology is so, so let's learn how the DLP technology works. So in this illustration, you can see that a light source, it could be a laser, it could be a projector, it shines on a digital mirror device, the DMD. This is the key technology in DLP. And then the reflected light will cure the photopolymer, similar to how the SLA cures the polymer. Because the polymer resin is a photopolymer, so the photopolymer cures when exposed to the UV light. So then the fabricator platform moves upwards. So this is very similar to the top down and bottom up tech methods of SLA that we mentioned in the last episode. So let's go a bit deeper on how the DLP actually works. So you can see that the light source it shines through a color filter. So this color filter is not needed in 3D printing. This color filter provides the color spectrum in normal, normal projectors. So the DMD device is actually made out of millions of micro mir mirrors that can tilt towards the light source or away from the light source. So this creates, so this will create either a black, black image or a white image, a a bit map image of white and black so the white pixels could represent the part that is that's supposed to be cured and the black pixels could represent the part that's supposed to be avoided so with this the DLP technology manages to selectively cure the photopolymer in the resin vat so next so now that we know how DLP printers work, at least roughly, let's weigh the pros and cons of the DLP process. So the, for the advantages, the DLP process is quick. Why is it quick? It's because that the projector can cure an entire layer at once because you're projecting the cross-section image. So this is much faster than the SLA process in which the laser has to selectively scan the hatch, the cross-section area, one line by one line. 
makes the resolution of the LPE technology is very high because the, pro the projector technology has been developed for a long time. And the next advantages is that it's less shrinkage because you're curing the entire section at once. You won't have the you won't have the case of one one side is cured, one side is not cured. So this reduces the shrinkage seen. The disadvantages of the DLP process is firstly it is expensive because the DMB mirror technology is a very intricate process very intricate device because you have millions of movable mirrors actually so it's very difficult. Another disadvantage is that the resin material is toxic when it's uncured like the SLA process so only when the resin is cured that it is quite safe to handle. The next disadvantage of the DLP process is that usually the DLP process is a uh, top down so so there's a peeling process involved and if this peeling process is not done correctly then you will face some defects in the printing process yeah so let's now move to the applications of DLP so this applications I got from the Envision Tech application page so they do dental applications like teeth aligners they do jewelry stuff applications for like investment casting part patterns they also do medical devices and implants like hearing aid so like many other 3d processes dlp is also very good for visual prototypes for fit form and functions so this applications of 3d printers they're usually quite similar to one another so yeah so some current research on the DLP so I've read that some researchers at the Energy Research Center of Netherlands has reported in being successfully successful in creating a DLP based metallic 3d printer in April this year so basically I, I think that their process is very much similar to the DLP cer ceramic 3D printers in which the ceramic particles are infused into a polymer into a photopolymer resin so the DLP pros the DLP printer cures the photopolymer which traps the ceramic particles or metallic particles in this case and then after which you have the 3D part then the part is then heated away so that the particles are sintered together while the polymer is melted down so then the metal is probably infused again with a secondary metal to create the final solid part so I think this research is quite interesting because it provides another means of cre creating metallic parts using 3d printing so yeah so once again we reach to the summary so hope you know about Autodesk Spark DLP 3D printer and about Envision Tech development on the DLP technology and how DLP based 3D printers work and what's actually in it then the advantages and disadvantages of DLP 3D printers and lastly the applications and if you can still remember, I've also mentioned a bit on some research that researchers at Netherlands have done in creating a metallic DLP based 3D printer. So let's move on to the reference. Hope you enjoyed episode 9 on the DLP process. So this would not have been possible without the wonderful illustrations and the information from the website so these are the following references my university that I studied in in exposing me to the world of 3d printers and its many wonders so without it I would not be I would not know 3d printing as well as I've known it now so I thank you once again and I hope you stay tuned for episode 10 it should be 
on PolyJet, I believe. Yeah, thank you.